what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're going to be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today we'll be talking about the future of the alien and predator franchises we'll be talking about scream 7 very briefly just recapping the patrick dempsey stuff we'll be talking about final destination 6 and i'll be sharing my thoughts on the first three episodes of the creep tapes which we know is the expansion of the creep films coming to shutter next month so starting off here with alien and predator 20th century studio boss gave a lot of juicy details about the future of these two franchises to the hollywood reporter recently alien romulus 2 is in the works there are two predator movies coming one we already knew about one was shot in secret and then he also went into details about a little bit more on the topic of a romulus sequel he said we're working on a sequel idea now we haven't quite closed our deal with fetty alvarez but we are going to and he has an idea that we're working on the two survivors rain and andy played by kaylee spaney and david johnson were real highlights of the film and so i always think of it like wow where do people want to see them go next we know there's going to be aliens. We know there's going to be great horror set pieces, but I fell in love with both of them and want to see what their story is. Now, obviously, that's confirming to us that Kaylee Spaney and Johnson will be back playing those sibling characters from Romulus. So hopefully that will come to fruition in a very satisfying way, much like Romulus was. So on the topic of Predator, he said, yes, a Predator movie will have a theatrical release. This is obviously in reference to Badlands. He said, I'll tell you very simply, after Prey became a success, Dan Trachtenberg came back and said he didn't want to do Prey 2. And we're like, what do you want to do? And he rattled off a bunch of ideas that were really crazy, but really cool. We've actually done two of them. Two are coming out next year. One I can't talk about yet, but the other one is the live action Predator film with Elle Fanning that just wrapped in New Zealand. That'll be out theatrically sometime next year. I think it's supposed to be November, November 2025. It's titled Badlands, and it's an absolutely bonkers idea. It is a sci-fi thing, but it's not what everybody thinks it is. And I mean, it's awesome. It's so nuts, but in Dan, we trust. There's a second Predator movie that we have different plans for. Dan has actually directed both of these films. There's a secret Predator movie that will come out before the theatrical one, but I can't say anything about that yet. So learning that there is a secret Predator film that was shot, that was the biggest bombshell of what came out yesterday because i wasn't even expecting to find out that there was a second predator film that was shot the only one that's been highlighted to us in our face was the one starring l fanning so big kudos to them for keeping that away from the radar by distracting us with the one that's coming out in theaters starring l fanning who's going to be starring as these twin sisters battling the yaucha now on the topic of alien versus predator this is what he had to say about a possible new Alien vs. Predator movie happening, and it seemed like it would be done in a way that's combining what Dan Trachtenberg and Fede Alvarez are doing with their respective revivals of these franchises. He said it wouldn't be in the way you think, that's the thing, not in the way that it will be just called Alien vs. Predator or anything like those original movies. If we do this, they'll be organically created out of these two franchises that we've continued with characters that we fall in love with, and those characters will combine perhaps but we haven't got to that point and we're not going to just bang it out i respect that i respect that i would like to see this done in a way that is reminiscent of freddy versus jason if you will even though freddy versus jason themselves only really had the jason goes to hell film set it up i would like to see something set up between these two respective revivals of the franchises from freddy and dan culminate into another alien versus predator movie and that would be the right way to do it if you're going to give us one not just randomly throwing them back into the mix versus one another so let's talk about scream 7 patrick dempsey acknowledged that he'd been approached to return as mark kincaid for scream 7 on an episode of the dates of the today show he said he's just waiting on the script like everyone else but at this point it's not hard to even think that these stars are lying to a degree he seemingly confirmed the conversations about his return involve him and sydney being married which backs up the rumored plot details if there's anything scream 7 absolutely has to get right with this if patrick signs is that it must sell us on the relationship of mark and sydney me as a fan and those of you as fans fantasizing about them for years isn't going to be a strong enough selling point when it actually materializes on screen we have never seen this couple on screen post scream 3 so the film has to get us invested in them as a couple before it makes rash decisions to either kill off mark or something similar that puts mark in jeopardy no shade to mark patrick dempsey himself a tremendous actor but I don't know who the hell he is compared to Sydney. So it's a one-sided commitment for us at, at the moment as viewers. We're invested in him 
only because he's Sydney's husband. But if you do not give him more to work with and we if, if that dynamic isn't explored enough during the events of Scream 7, no matter what happens to him, I won't care. You have to sell us on that relationship. We've never seen it. You're going to have to get it across to us that we should care about this this unity. So let's talk about Final Destination 6. Final Destination 6 is having another test screening soon, sometime in the first week of November or so. Keep in mind, the lead actress posted something on her IG story a few days ago, hinting at potential reshoots occurring. So this new screening could expose a second ending. That's not the only thing it could expose. Depending on what the reception is, the studio will decide what ending to go with. Now, of course, as I just referenced, there's also the possibility that the ending will stay the same, but this new material could include an expected cameo from an old survivor that I've talked about in the past who is referenced throughout the sixth movie. So when it comes to Final Destination 6, those of you who plan to attend this test screening, hope you enjoy. Hope it lives up to your expectations. And hopefully, if anything gets out, it'll be positive feedback. But yeah, they've already made it clear that there is a test screening for this film happening during the first week of November because it's being advertised all over the internet and they're not even hiding what the project is that's being tested. So we'll see what comes of that and if any good news comes from these reactions from the test screening. The last thing we're going to talk about here is going to be the Creep Tapes. The Creep Tapes first three episodes, I will say, are a nice reintroduction to the franchise. It captures the uncomfortable but sometimes humorous nature fans appreciate about those first two films, allowing newcomers to become hooked as well, even if you haven't seen those prior films. So each episode as, as of now, and hopefully this continues, stands on its own stands on its own quite well, unearthing other layers of this deranged but highly compelling killer who still enjoys luring videographers into a situation that quickly transforms into a nightmare. I say quickly because the episodes are only 30 minutes, so the pacing here is quicker and more energetic. It's not that slow burn that the first two films are where you're on the edge of your seat because you know it's coming. You know it's coming here, but it's a lot more rapid and energetic. The pacing works in his favor because I was invested the entire runtime of each episode and at the same time when the episodes ended, I'm I'm wanting to see certain episodes fleshed out into feature length films. I'm not going to lie. While Creep 3 wouldn't have been a project I scoffed at, the format with the TV show could put a bigger spotlight on this franchise. Mark Duplass remains menacing at all times, but still manages to pull out genuine laughs from time to time with his boisterous behavior that comes and goes with this character. I think everyone's going to enjoy these first three episodes. I think I'm going to enjoy the rest of the season. I just wanted to get my thoughts on the first three episodes that I've watched. So let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications if you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.